Good afternoon. My name is Jim Fogarty. I work in advertising and media, primarily media production. Uh, I was, uh, I started in media production several years ago, and it's been a very rewarding career path, and I want to tell you a little bit about why. Uh, I first moved back to the area in the late 90s, and let me back up a little bit, though. Let me tell you actually about how I got here. How I got here was, I consider myself a pretty innovative and progressive and in the know type guy, because I'm in media and advertising and we all think that way. But quite honestly, when I got asked to be a part of TEDx here in Youngstown, I, I admittedly and kind of embarrassingly really didn't know what TEDx was all about. But thankfully, I surround myself with those who are more progressive and hipper than I am, if you could imagine. And once I found out what it was all about, I thought it sounded really, really cool. And I definitely wanted to be a part of it. My dilemma was that how could someone like myself, an artist here in the Rust Belt, what they call the Rust Belt, how could I possibly contribute about innovation in our very short time together today? And so I thought I could tell you about how I started out and how that's led me to a very rewarding creative path. I moved back to Northeast Ohio in the 90s after graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Film Studies. Yes, they actually have a degree in which you study film. It's a little bit different than film production. Uh, it's more academic, it's more about the aesthetics of the cinematic art form rather than how to create it. And this was a very foreign concept to most people here. Someone equated it to a degree in basket weaving. And, <laughs> yeah. And it was, uh, it was told to me by several people, and the general consensus by almost everyone, honestly, was that there was no way I could make a living as a visual artist here in the Youngstown Warren area. And that I needed to move to a bigger place like Los Angeles or New York City, etc. But that wasn't for me. Don't get me wrong, I, have, I love LA and I love New York and I have a lot of friends and peers in the business that work there and have moved there. Uh, however, for me, it was more important to break out rather than break in. I didn't just want to join a scene, I wanted to be a part of creating a scene right here at home. And so together with some other young, like-minded individuals, some really lofty aspirations, and the innovation of digital video, which was less than a year old at the time, we decided to make a film, a feature film. Now, I had been to a bunch of different places, and I would read about and heard about all these amazing places that where groups of artists got together and collaborated on each other's ideas. And in doing so, they created these movements, like the Seattle Sound, right, or the, the independent film scene of Austin, or any of the creative renaissances that took place in Athens or Boulder, Providence, Portland. Okay, well here, I was surrounded by people that I loved, and I didn't want to leave. And I started to think about these creative movements and how these movements made a scene. And these scenes helped to revitalize neighborhoods, they contributed to economic development, and they gave a greater sense of pride to those people who lived there, and a greater sense of self-worth. And so together with some like-minded people and some business people who really bought into what we were doing, we set out to make our film. Now, this was not easy by any stretch of the imagination because None of us had any experience whatsoever. This was everyone's first film, and it was a little frightening, but we, we did it. Now, I shot and edited the film mostly by myself, but as you know, filmmaking is a collaborative art form. So I gathered up some friends, actors, musicians, writers, poets, filmmakers, and together we created some synergy, and we created this film. And when it was done, we did uh, some private screenings and eventually a small college tour, and we did some film festivals. We ended up winning a couple of awards. 
and eventually the film was released on DVD. And in spite of its shortcomings, its technical flaws, our inexperience, the fact that it was the first film any of us had ever worked on, in spite of that, it eventually made it to Netflix, which was kind of cool. But in all honesty, the film hasn't done great business, okay? In fact, very few people have ever seen the film, let alone heard of it. It's called Waxing Gibbous. Check it out. <laughs> um, and so, after that was all done, and we got on Netflix, and that was really great, and, and no one really broke out as the next big thing, but what it did do was it created a lot of buzz locally. We, we got a lot of TV, radio, and press coverage, which was, was kind of fun, but really what that did was send up a flare, a beacon, a beacon to every local artist here in the Rust Belt that said, you are not alone, and... If we could do it, a bunch of guys that didn't know what we were doing, then so could you. Flash forward 15 years later to present day. And that small little film not only jump-started my career in media, but it also was a great example of how one small project could have a big impact. The ripple effect of that film allowed a cast and crew of talented individuals to go on and work in several other award-winning and inspirational projects. The connections to the other projects that they worked on are over 100 film and TV projects, both independent that they helped write, create, direct, act in themselves, and also big studio films like Mission Impossible 3 or the upcoming Captain America sequel, just to name a few. And it all started on that one little project. For 15 years, I've made my living almost exclusively as a visual artist. I own a home, I'm raising a family, I'm saving for retirement, all the things that every professional wants. It's been extremely rewarding. It's also been rewarding to have been a small part of pushing forward an evolving creative renaissance right here in the Rust Belt. I've met some great people along the way and I've made some really good friends and you can't put a value on that. I've also learned a few things, a few philosophies I want to share with you real quickly. Number one, art needs patrons, those who support, and practitioners, those who create. The world needs both, and they are not mutually exclusive to one another. If you are a patron, you can also be an artist, no matter how good or bad you think your talents are. And if you're a practitioner, an artist, you also need to be a patron because you can't expect others to support your creative endeavors if you're not willing to support theirs. Number two, don't be afraid to be a leader, but also don't be too proud to be a follower either. Leaders are the ones that often start a movement, but it's the followers that are the movement. And lastly, have the courage to walk your own path no matter the geography. Most people think that the place makes the art or the artist better, but oftentimes a few determined artists can make the place better than what it is before. And collectively, all of us, leaders, followers, practitioners, patrons, we must be doing something right here in Youngstown, in the Rust Belt, because we've created a scene, a movement, innovative enough to host this TEDx event. And that's pretty cool. So let's keep going. Let's keep going. Thank you very much.